First, the Sox Devil Rays game on Wednesday. Pick it up, bottom of the ninth. No more the tying run on second. Down 9 8. Mike Stanley, base hit. Off of Roberto Hernandez. The throw from Bubba Trammell is high. Garcia Parra is safe. We go to extras. Bottom of the 10th. Devil Rays up 11 10. Garcia Parra, the chance to win it. Runners on second and third, but Hernandez gets him to ground to Aaron Ledesma at third to wrap it up. The Devil Rays win a close one. 11 to 10 in 10. Canseco did not go yard, but he walked four times. However, Wade Boggs homered. His 52nd career homer in Fenway as the Devil Rays won for the fourth time in five games. Nomar did extend his hit streak to 15 in the loss. The Red Sox finally put John Valentin on the DL due to the effects he getting beamed on the head over the weekend. The Tigers and Yanks in a boogie down matinee. Top of the seventh, already up 5-2 are the Tigers when Andy Pettit gives one up to Tony Clark. Giving one up is really a relative term here. Only the 14th player to reach the batter's hitting eye in center field. Since the stadium was remodeled in 1976, Yankees winning streak over at 7, 8 to 2. Fletcher and Fletcher got it. To wrap it up, the O's blow leads in the 9th and 10th to lose 10 9, their 7th straight loss. Said Fletcher, I've never had a walk off homer in my career, so it was kind of special. He's now hitting 305 with six homers and eight, 18 ribbies since. T's got it. Second career home run. He added a double later in the game. Giants going to win 4 1 behind Ortiz's bat and arm and moving to a first place tie with a Diamondback unit who rarely slipped up on this night, but right here he does in a bit. Matched up against Ron Vallone, a lefty who was dealing for the Reds. Top of the first, Jay Bell swinging, then Greg Colburn looking. Vallone, a no hitter through five. Bottom of the first. Johnson facing Dimitri Young, who's playing for Sean Casey, and Young got it. Wow, Jack McKeon pushing buttons. Everybody's hitting. Vallone was dealing. Reds up 1-0 on the 16th homer allowed by Johnson this season, but the unit would focus and settle down. Greg Vaughn swinging. Barry Larkin. In the fifth inning, Aaron Boone. Mike Cameron. Jason LaRue. Five straight strikeouts by Johnson, who struck out a season-high 17 on the night. But would you believe Ballone did him one better? Damian Miller with one on, up the middle. Barry Larkin ranging, making the play. Ballone gave up just one hit through eight, and the Reds win 2-0. How hot are the Reds? Randy Johnson struck out a season-high 17 of them, and they still won their ninth in a row. Johnson has now struck out 31 in his last two games, both losses. As for Ballone, He's given up only two singles in his last two appearances, spanning 15 scoreless innings. Everything is working for Cincinnati. Any pitch working at all for, for you? Uh, all, you know, like, got a zero on the board, zeros across. So I, I had to be throwing strikes. Guys played defense. You know, it was a great team effort. We feel real good right now. We're playing consistent baseball. Uh, everybody's getting into the act. And, um, you know, only thing we can ask for is another win tomorrow. To San Diego, where Padre fans consider Kevin Brown evil. Bottom of the seventh, however, Reggie Sanders steals his mojo. Taking him deep and gone. Three run shot. Sanders would hit another later on the night. Yeah, it's getting a little weird now, right? Yeah, right, right. Brown leaves to the jeers of the Padre fans. 11 to 2 is the final. The Padres do set a franchise record with their 12th straight win. Nine runs and 11 hits, both season highs allowed by Kevin Brown, who's allowed 21 hits over 12 and a third innings in two starts this year against San Diego. Well, it never happened. Craig Vigio, the chopper over Fernando Tatis. Jimenez gave up singles to the first two batters he faced. Still bottom of the first, Azers up 3-0, and Richard Hidalgo finds his happy place down the line. Bill Spires would score on that. Spires also had three hits in this game, and it was a tough night for Jose. 11 to 3, the final. Jimenez having allowed seven earned runs, seven hits, and the Cubs lock on hand. Bottom seven, tie game, David Weathers, Sammy Sosa. That's a rocket. Sammy's major league leading 30th homer, his fourth homer in as many games. And yes, the president is a fan, and he says so is Hillary. Cubs go on to the win, and the president getting a jacket and a beanie baby. A beanie baby. Yes, that's what it is. <laughs> Thank you. Benitez 3-1 heat. Mark Kotze all over it. Adding a little levity to the situation. A game-winning home run. Mark Kotze's fifth home run of the year. 
The Marlins were 0 for 22 against Benitez before Kotze's game-winning homer. Said Marlins manager John Bowles, it's the first time we've left the other team on the field at the end of the game. Hey, it's a nice feeling. It was just the sixth loss in the last 23 games for the Mets. Despite the loss, the Mets remain three games back of it. Around Ken Hill of the Angels on Wednesday night. Hill was out after three and a third. And now Rafael Palmero pouring it on and against the relief. Doubling in the right field corner. Greer come on down. Palmero four for four, four RBI in the game. A moment of trepidation in the fifth with Pudge trying to leg out a single. Houston. He hits the bag awkwardly. Cannot make the Sprained play. left knee, Rodriguez left the game, MRI the on Thursday. But other than that, it was all hunky-dory for the Rangers that. in Anaheim. When is it not, actually? The Rangers have won six straight at Anaheim now, dating back to last season, outscoring the Angels with a mind-boggling combined score of 57-8. to eight. Paul, Not a replay. He does it again. The guy's strong. Let's put it that way. But Eric Milton brought it on the night. Bottom of the ninth, 5-3 Twins. Dave Justice swinging. Milton's line, eight in the third, five hits, three earns, two walks, seven strikeouts. Said Milton's manager, Tom Kelly, to strike out a hitter like Justice. Long ball, but Steve Traxel's getting a little tired of it. This is a homer to Marquise Grissom. This is 14 home runs he's given up in his last eight starts. Pedro has only given up 15 runs in his last eight starts. <laughs> nine earned runs, nine hits, three and two thirds. Checking out is Steve Traxel. Dean Dan Serafini in, but no better. Valentin with a two run shot. Then it's Ron Belliard doubling down the line and left. Nomo and Mark Loretta score. Eight straight hits, lead eight runs in the fourth. Jim Riggleman and the Cubs. Down 14-4, but back come the Cubbies. <laughs> well, this was a day when everybody looked like Sammy Sosa, including that Mickey Morandini. He played 1,095 games in the big leagues, never had a two-home run game. He had one today, and obviously he knew that one was in the first row. Watch that trot. Four batters later, Henry Rodriguez, take your time. Cubs are down 14-9 as Grace and Sosa both touch home. Three batters later, the inning goes on. It's 14-10. Jose Hernandez has just exited stage right. Cubs, it's 14-12. 15-12. Morandini's on first. Manny Alexander laid it down. Cirillo, great play at third. Morandini, those at second with one down. Mark Grace come through for us. Sammy's on deck. He'd be the tying run. Dave Nielsen's throw is there, and Mickey Morandini gets called out going to third. Why? Not a good base running play. Left-handed batter up. You're down three runs. Grace gets on. Sosa's a tying run. Morandini was probably safe, but he shouldn't have been running anyway. His hand gets Gets in probably just a tad before, but not good. And then Grace strikes out. Morandini, the baseball gods, are going to punish him. He's got the head first slide. He hurt his hand. He's got it nice. Speaking of ice, how about getting that scoreboard operator some ice? Same score in the ninth. Valentin. He left the yard from the right side. He's going to do it from the left side. His fifth. The Brew Crews put 17 on the board, and they ain't done. 18 runs, 20 hits. Gaetti's warming up. <laughs> he didn't get in, but the Cubs lose 19-12. The guy out on the scoreboard looked a little bit like... Uh... The leadoff hitter's Al Martin. You like to get the leadoff hitter out. Well, Al likes to go out, too. Ninth home run this year. Just like that, person the Phils are in a one nothing hole. Now in the second, Warren Morris off second. Brent Brown. Liftoff. Two run home run. Brown seventh. Pirates up three zip. Now two on for Jason Kendall. He's got to be your all star catcher, doesn't he? Ed Sprague scores. The throw goes to second, so Yvonne Cruz would come home as well. 5 1 in favor of the Bucks. You can argue Lieberthal. You can argue, argue Piazza. Bottom four with one on. Al Martin. Person. Here we go again. So you figured that all out by yourself. What's that? Piazza and Lieberthal. I like that. Martin's 10th this year, 7-2 Pirates. Jason, talk about Kendall and the Phillies. Well, there's no love, uh, love affair going on here. Earlier in the week, Paul Bird accused Jason Kendall of diving into pitches. Terry Francona said they should outlaw that arm pad that Kendall wears. Kendall said, who the heck is Paul Bird? <laughs> and that's what you get. Go around on that maybe. And this is what you get. Morris picks him up by slicing one down the line and left. And Warren Morris has a two-run double. And the Pittsburgh Pirates, who scored an awful lot of runs, 
Knights against the Philadelphia Phillies win 12-7. Ten days ago, Carl Everett yard. Here's your two-run shot, number nine for Everett. It's 3-1 Astros in Botton Field. Traditionally hadn't dug himself holes like this. Now, every time McGuire comes up against Houston, they move people, Dave. Well, they've had three infielders on the left side of the diamond almost the entire series. Mark kind of shoots one, beats the defense, but I'm sure Matt Galante doesn't mind seeing the singles, even though it cost them a run. Cards within one at 3-2. Now, it's 5-3. Botton Field, the pitcher. Biggio... He just couldn't get there. Fernando Tatis scores. Eli Marrero scores. It's 7-3. Bottenfield's got a double. Now in the eighth, 8-4 eight cards. J.D. Drew to center. Everett. And those are balls that you'll see Astro players generally come up with. McEwing scores. Drew all the way around for what would be an inside-the-park home run. 10-4, good buddy. The Cardinals swipe out the Astros in this one. How about the Royals? Max Suzuki, he had his problems, but first Baldwin, Beltran, curveball done. Matt couldn't match him. <laughs> well, Max Suzuki has gone from Seattle to the Mets to Kansas City, and he obviously has a little jet lag because he's late getting to the plate to cover here, and it costs him a run. Mag scores, it's two zip, bottom five, Baldwin, Beltran. Okay, looking again, one of seven Ks for Baldwin on the night. Mike Sweeney, 0-2 fastball. That's a big mistake. Game tied at two. In the seventh, same score. Mark Prashada to Craig Wilson. Back, this one goes up the middle. Oh, Fabulous, who comes up with everything. Couldn't. Leifer scores, 3-2. Prashada. Uh-oh. Jim McKean smartly calls a balk. Late for the second. Two batters later, bases loaded. Chris Singleton. Anybody? Anybody? Mueller? Nobody? That clears the bases. White Sox had a clutch hit and they win over the Royals. 6 2 as Baldwin gets his first win since the 29th of May. Chicago's won 24 of his last 30. Bob Wells walks Ramirez. Travis Fryman comes home to score. The Indians are down 4 3, and here we go. The next batter is David Justice. Justice, liner to right. Kenny Lofton coming around to score. Here comes Robbie Alomar, and he too is saved. The Indians up 5-4, part of a six-run sixth, and they win 7-5. Their 31st come from behind win. Of and they keep Seattle in the yard. In the fifth, Russ and Davis. A a swing and a to short, to Hada, glove, spin, fire. And he threw it over some of the nicest cut grass in the majors. Bottom five, two nothing A's. Tony Phillips. Eric Chavez scores. It's three nothing open. Now soup in the eighth, four one with a man on first. Yeah, a lot of times the young Oakland infield, you saw Tejada make the great play. Eric Chavez, not a very good throw here, right through the wickets of Tony Phillips at second base. Chavez charged with the air. Next batter, Hunter going on the pitch. Ramon Hernandez's throw gets by Phillips. That ball's got to be knocked down. Davis scores 4-2 Oakland. Later in the inning, 4-3 Oakland. Griffey gets a big jump, steals the base. Junior in scoring position for David Segui. Here come the Mariners. Base hit center field tied at four. That made it 4-4. Four four. Now in the bottom of the ninth, same score. Generally, that's bad news for the Mariners. Phillips to right, A.J. Hinch. Scores. Phillips goes three for five with a couple of runs batted in. And the A's win 5-4. Junior one for four. Two on, two down. Bonds. Uh, he sort of hesitates, figures he got not enough, but instead, there's the break that Bonds has been waiting for. A lot of hard hit balls since he came back. A lot of them have been caught. This one ends up being dropped. Bonds gets a triple. Look at the replay. <laughs> well, the, the first time I ever set foot in Candlestick Park, Greg Lazinski looked right at me and said, I wish they'd blow this place up. I think Jeff Barry shares that sentiment that Stick claims another victim. That was his first trip to three con. Jeff Kent. We well, don't have to worry about that if you're Jeff, if you're Barry, if you're Jeff Kent either. His 12th of the year, 5-1. Sean Estes seems to have rediscovered his game in the sixth after giving off a leadoff single to Echeverria. Well, he gets Dante Bichette. Good off-speed pitch down. 6-4, three double play. Estes still leads the majors in walks, but his last eight games, 3.44. Good changeup gets Vinny Castillo. In the seventh, same score, Henry Blanco. This one to straightaway center. Marvin Bernard. Used to the wind, good catch out in center, and there's a little wrestling off the top rope. Giants go on and win 7-1, Estes 8 innings, 6 days. 
Dodgers shake their lineup up, Dave. Well, Raul Mondesi, they say he's been a little more patient this year, so Davey Johnson sticks him in the leadoff hole to see if he can generate some offense, but he strikes out. They're one for five in the game. Pods down 2-1, Ben Davis. Rip City all the way to the wall. Vanderwall touches home. Pods add another run. They go up 3-2 at this point in the fifth. Two out, man on for Devo. Try to lay one down, does Magadan. You're gonna have to fire that to get White at first, and safe? No, called out, top six. Pods up 4-2, Clement to trip Cromer. To short, Damian Jackson. Oh. That is the old ball playing the fielder. Cromer's on, that arrow would lead to Mondesi with two on. Right through it goes, Dodgers pull within one. Not a good day in the field, by the way, for Damian Jackson. To the seventh, Devo's up at bat. Will Cunane is on the mound. We're seeing the slow roller. This time he figures, I don't want anybody to catch it. Ruben Rivera says, hang on, Devo. At the wall, dealing with some sun. Good catch, bottom eight, Rivera with a bat. Yard, Alan Mills hung one. Rivera's got 12 this year. Padres win their 13th straight. The 6-3 win over the Dodgers. We're seeing pitching, defense, and some timely offense. Well, uh, it's not every day. You Most of those hits and five batting titles came in a Boston uniform. And yet he still gets booed at the fence. Boggs says, I've come to expect it. The majority of the people doing it were in diapers when I was here. Well, of course, as you're well aware of, they're doing it again. They're giving Wade Boggs boos. Well, years ago. Top of the second, they'd be cheering in Tampa. That's because he's playing some wall ball. Doubles off the wall against Jin Ho Cho. Boggs went two for four in the game. Top of the fourth, here we go. Tied at one. Mike D. Felice had a big game. Base hit up the middle. That would score Paul Soretto. And the Devil Rays take a lead 2-1. They go on to blow out the Sox. 12 to 3. How about D. Felice? He had seven RBIs all season. Story for New York. At his best when he gets opponents to fly out. And that's exactly what Tiger after Tiger batter did. If it's getting repetitive, imagine how the Tigers must have felt. Irabu got 19 Tigers to either fly or line out. And we are showing you all 19 of them. He wins his fourth straight decision and improves to 5 0 lifetime against Detroit. Arabu picks up his second career shutout. The Yankees do it to Detroit. Six. Hairston. Tell you, he's had himself a good series. Solo shot to left. Came up with his first extra base hit. This is his first home run. 4 0 Orioles. Scott Erickson's got it on cruise control in the bottom of the six. Delgado. Did he? He did. Willie Green, Sean Green, 18th home run of the season as they all come home at 6-3. Erickson, uh, we're going to the bullpen, Dave. Well, you saw the 6.64 bullpen number in June. Didn't get any better tonight in July. Doug Johns hits Darren Fletcher on a 2-2 pitch. Ricky Bonus in to replace John. Jacob Brumfield, a guy you got to get out. He doesn't. Walks him. Mike Timlin tries to preserve the O's slim 6-5 lead. And Willie Green, who has been a hero lately, singles scoring two. Blue Jays take a 7-6 lead. Uh, here's the Willie Green deal. Jim Fergosi and Green both say the credit for playing him goes to uh, Fergosi's son, Robbie, who uses Green every time he DHs somebody with his... The Expos, only 19 home runs allowed. The fewest in the major. If you talk about owning a team, Glavin hasn't lost to Montreal since August of 92. Can I get him some offense early? Ryan Klesko. That is going to absolutely go to the wall and put a dent in it. RBI's 39 and 40 for Klesko. It's two zip Braves. Lockhart and Jones both were walked. They both scored. Walks hurt you. All right, here's the young. Yeah, one of the problems that the Expos have had is when you run so many young players out there, they make mental mistakes. Where was Dan Smith on that one? Nowhere. But there's more to come. Fernando Siganal, a little blooper down the right field line. This gets by Brian Jordan, and it looks like a triple. Whoops. Siganal only on second base, and now you'll see why, Carl. He assumes this ball's going to be caught, and it's not. He gets slow getting out of the box, winds up on second base, and this kills him because Robert Machado now is going to line out to Andrew Jones, and Siganol thought this ball was going to drop. He winds up getting doubled of second, and he's not in jail here. He's just on the bench. <laughs> if they lose, had enough.
Dave? Well, give Tom Glavin that kind of help, and it's all over. Glavin's been on the mark lately. Last seven games, 2.65 ERA. Breaking ball down and away. Rondell White tries to go the other way. 4-6-3. Nice turn by Walt Weiss and Robert Machado. Another great changeup down and away. Glavin scattered seven hits. Didn't have to worry about the Braves' bullpen tonight because he went all the way. And they did just activate Walt Weiss. Up. This was a game that only Bob Walk, Walker Cooper, and B.B. King would have loved. But the Marlins didn't love it because they walked 11 Mets. Ryan Dempster has pitched really well, but not in this inning. He walks three Mets in the third inning. Here's what that one forces in a run. Then after walking three in a row, Todd Pratt swings at the first pitch, but he winds up driving in two runs, so that works out fine. Mets now up three, nothing, but the wildness is not over. Wild pitch here to Ordonez. So now Pratt goes to second. They're going to intentionally walk Ordonez to get to the pitcher, Octavio Dautel, who has never had a hit in his career. And what happens? He walks him, too. That's six walks. Two and two-thirds innings for Dempster. Mets up 4 nothing. Dempster gone. All right, so Brian Edmondson, your turn. Ricky Henderson not waiting. And the base is loaded. Mm. Oh, Preston Wilson in and out of the leather. Pratt and Ardonia score the Mets plate six. They're up six zip. Let's go back to Octavio Dotel, Dave. Well, you probably don't get a chance to hit a lot in the minor leagues. Uh, boy, he didn't uh, get out of the way either. Brian Edmondson hit him right in the back of the head. Look at the mark of the baseball, but I'm tough. I'm a rookie. I want to show him I'm staying in. I want to win. <laughs> Here's Ordonez to right. Agbayani and Cedeno score. Katze falls. A very sloppy game. Mets win 12-8. Ordonez goes 2-4 with 